Well, as you know, just by living here, there are endless stories to be told in South Florida, making it the ideal backdrop for movies. But without help to fund their projects, many local filmmakers often struggle to get their stories told. But one group hopes to change all that. The nonprofit Oolite Arts, formerly Art Center South Florida, has launched its latest initiative called The Block, awarding a total of $32,000 to five documentary filmmakers, each with a unique story about their little corner of Miami-Dade County. Here to share more is Oolite Arts President and CEO Dennis Scholl, you've seen him on this program before, and first place winner filmmaker Dorian Monroe, who took home $14,000 to make his film these kids, this city. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being here. Having you. All right, Dennis, let's start with the name change first and what Oolite means. What is that? Well, <laughs> it has most, a meaning, yeah. Little do you know, but yeah. Oolite is everywhere. Oolite yeah. is the bedrock of Florida, it is what we sit on, it's limestone. And so we want to be, with Oolite Arts, we want to be the bedrock of the Miami arts community. And so that's what signals our name change. There you go. All right, so let's talk about the block and why this is so important to our community and how you guys came up with this idea. Well, we have an incredible number of uh, filmmakers in our community, narrative filmmakers, documentary filmmakers, shorts, features, and we felt like the short documentary idea was something that could use a little boost. And in addition to that, as you said, this is a town with a lot of different neighborhoods and a lot of great stories, and yeah. so we wanted to give local filmmakers a chance to tell us what inspires them within their neighborhood. We got 129 responses of people wow. who said, I wanna stand up before a five person jury and pitch my film. We chose five of them and the winner's sitting next to me. That's amazing. All right, so let's get to you, Dorian. First of all, congratulations on being selected. And I heard you were far and away the best. Like they knew right away who number one was. So congratulations. Thank you. And, and thank you, Dennis, for putting together this amazing opportunity. Um, it's definitely something that's needed in South Florida, so thank you. So the film is called These Kids, This City, and before we talk about it, we're gonna watch a little clip, so let's take a look. Mike's up! Guys down! It's more than a movement! It's more than Everybody wanna live? Nobody wanna die! Nobody Nobody wanna die. die. I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a deep connection with Martin Luther King and want people to be free, right? These are the these are people who go who defy the American government. They're, these bikes are not should be legal. But we did not have no violence on this street, and that's a good thing. Charges were upgraded yesterday against Mark Bartlett. He was caught on camera in a heated dispute with a group of black teens while holding a gun. It's shot really well. I love the music. So talk to us about how you came upon this story and this like bike culture basically in Liberty City, correct? Yeah. Well, growing up in Miami, uh, we all know about the bike movement that takes place in Liberty City, Martin Luther King weekend, but I was really curious about it. You know, why Liberty City and why MLK weekend? So MLK Day 2019, I sought out to answer these questions for myself. And what I saw was fascinating. Um, through my investigation, I kind of discovered that the manner in which these young people ride, it's almost a form of silent protest. You know, on a day where we honor a civil rights leader who made a living uh, protesting nonviolently, I found that that same nonviolent protest continues today, but in the form of bikes. So, and then tell us too about the gun incident. So, tell us more about what you were there, you shot that when that, well, some of that was also uh, footage from the television as well, yeah, right? When footage, the news covered that this man um, pulled out a gun on these kids. Yeah, it was an unfortunate incident. Uh, that footage wasn't shot by myself. That's footage from the media. I mean, that's something that went viral and it kind of catapulted this movement to a national spotlight. But these young people were on Brickell Bridge protesting the redevelopment of their Liberty City housing. And initially it looked like just a typical gentrification, protesting uh, the lack of affordable housing. But what I've come to discover, it's actually climate gentrification. 
um, because of climate change and sea level rise, mm -hmm. the land of Liberty City is coveted. Why? Reason being, it sits on the highest elevated land, some of the highest elevated land in Miami. Mm -hmm. So it has uh, some political undertones to the story as well. And we're also going to learn in your piece about a gentleman who you said kind of oversees this movement and oversees these boys, right? Yeah, there's a gentleman by the name of Dwight Wells. He's a founder of a movement called Bikes Up, Guns Down. And some of his kids or some of the kids that were involved in the footage that we captured. But uh, he's very instrumental in the community. You know, 33% of the young people in Liberty City grew up in single parent households. And he kind of serves as a father figure for a lot of these kids whether it's making sure they have food to eat or transportation to after-school activities. And uh, he's been real instrumental in a lot of these young people's lives. Yeah. Dennis, tell us what caught your eye and the eye of the jury when Dorian was one of those filmmakers presenting his proposal. Well, passion, mostly. Yeah. Uh, when he stood up and began to talk about his project, you could see that this that this was a project that um, he had spent a lot of time thinking about, had already invested a lot of time in, and we knew right away that we wanted to support this project. We think it's an important issue for our communities. We think that digging into that neighborhood is a place that people need to know more about and what's going on. Uh, and the other finalists did equally beautiful jobs in terms of one of them wanted to tell about a knife sharpener in Westchester. Somebody wanted to tell about the liveaboard boats that are moored off Dinner Key. Oh, wow. Uh, somebody we actually, I think, have a clip of some of them. Let's yeah. take a look at Great. some of the other finalists. This one was called Isle of Mine, obviously related to sea level rise and storms. Tell us a little bit about this one. Well, Lupe Figueres came to us and said, I want to tell a story about North Beach. It's threatened mm. by sea level rise, and I want to tell it through the use of the game Minecraft. Mm. So that's and what we saw in that's there. That's what you're seeing yeah. is chunks of Minecraft right. blended in with hurricanes, sea level rise, and of course the things that everybody's facing on Miami Beach. I live in Miami Beach, and uh, we're ground zero for this issue. So as you can see, the, the, the filmmakers are passionate sure. about these issues. These are important issues to us. And um, we were really, really excited about how everybody stepped up and brought us incredible stories. And the great news is thanks to the uh, Lewis Wolfson and Francis Wilson Family Foundation, yeah. we're back next year. So there will be the block two. That's wonderful. Well, and, and this is important, as you were saying, for our community. And the Oolight supports all artists, including filmmakers. And this is really kind of a direction you want to go in, right? Yeah, it's very important. And with this particular project, we've also been able to draft the University of Miami Film School. They have agreed Great. to work with Dorian and uh, the two other uh, second and third place winners of the pitch contest to help them with equipment, help them with the graduate assistance, and the professors are gonna dig in and help them make their films. We wanna see these films get made and brought to our community, and we've got kind of a little surprise about that. Yeah, yeah, we do. So, Dorian, congratulations on winning. We can't wait to see the piece, and I know Dennis also has a little. We have some exciting news for you, by the way, don't we, Dennis? We do, we do. So yesterday <laughs> I found out that the winner of the block, that their film, will receive an automatic acceptance into the Miami International Film Festival. So no pressure now, but now you've really <laughs> got to make a great film. Woohoo! So Congratulations, that's, nice. that's really exciting. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, we have a few more shooting dates planned. Yeah. Um, this gentleman's due in court on Monday, so that's something that we look forward to documenting. And there's a few more interviews, but we're at the latter stages of this project. I mean, of course, we have to score it musically, and I've talked to local music artist 12in, 
uh, nice. about scoring the project. And you know, we're interested in, it's a Miami-based project, so we're interested in Miami-based artists. So That's exciting. There's people like City Girls yeah. and Denzel Curry and Rick Ross that we're interested yeah. in. So if you all are watching this or end up seeing this, yeah. uh, you should be hearing from Thanks. us soon. All right, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Ben. Congratulations again. And for more thank on Oolite Arts, you can check out their website, oolitearts.org. We'll have this and more on our Facebook page, at your South FL.